So our next speaker uh, is, I think, an example of some of the outcomes that we get at events like this. Uh, David Curvella, uh, I first met t uh, two years ago when he came to a Serious Games Summit because he was at Hilton's Garden Inn brand and was thinking about using games uh, for potentially training all Garden Inn employees uh, in areas in, uh, that affect customer service scores. And the correlation between customer service scores and revenues is, is, is quite high. Uh, and so the idea was to look at some new methodologies to go alongside um, existing uh, pen and paper, lecture, videos, and other types of materials that his team produces uh, for the Hilton Garden Inn brand. And at um, that Serious Game Summit, Dave was able to meet with other developers, uh, met with myself. I eventually did, by disclosure, do some work with Hilton on this project um, and get a sense that he could accomplish what he had, what he had thought of. And now we're able to bring him back and say, okay, you know, here's a perfect example of a, of a client walking into the room, getting more jazzed on an original idea that they had, feeling secure about doing it um, and pursuing it um, to the point that they can actually come back and show, you, show us what they've built. Uh, what makes this even further amazing is that Dave uh, said that he was going to try and get this to come out on Sony's PlayStation Portable because then they could combine not only the game training on that device, but also put all their video training on it as well and create a single form factor for delivering that tra that training. At the same time, an audit of the PCs in Hilton Garden Inn hotels showed that they couldn't run the type of 3D graphics that they wanted to and the cost-benefit analysis uh, of running it on a PC or running it on a PlayStation Portable um, bore out very well. And... Uh, against his consultant's sense that it would actually be possible, <laughs> Dave was able to work very closely with um, some folks at Sony's um, PSP division who were keen and had, had sort of talked about being keen on trying to get some serious game content and testing it out as that type of platform um, on there. And as a result, I think we have the first ever serious games training product delivered on the PlayStation Portable platform. And this was built uh, by Virtual Heroes, which is a, a company that has been at many summits and shown past work. So um, I've sort of taken some of your speech, but I think it's important to, to celebrate the fact that somebody came to our conference a few years ago, found the information they needed, found the means to do what they wanted, took it back to their company and got it off the ground. So hopefully there are more of you in this audience and we can feature you on stage in years to come. So please welcome Dave Carvella. Uh, first, before I start, I want to know who I'm uh, talking to. Uh, I'll call you back when uh, we're ready. Uh, but I'll, I want to know uh, how many of you are game developers, if you can stand up, actually. If you're a game developer, stand up. Nothing to be ashamed of, right? Uh, 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 okay, the rest of it. If you're a corporate client, someone like me that came here two years ago to uh, look for a game, if you can raise your hand or stand up. Okay. Good, excellent. Uh, see more of you. And... Uh, Keep them up. Um, so uh, just um, I'll try and gear the presentation towards uh, both of those audiences. And um, if anybody here any, um, has any other questions, I'll have some time for questions at the end. Uh, Elton Garnin, Ultimate Team Play. Uh, I had to play the, display the logo up there just to justify the expense of me coming here. Uh, so everybody saw Elton Garnin. That's a brand I'm working for. Uh, my name again is David Curvella. I'm the Senior Manager of Brand Education for the Elton Garnin brand out of Filton Hotels Corporation. Hilton Hotels Corporation has uh, 11 brands altogether. I don't know, a luxury division, full service division, and focus service division. Hilton Garden Inn, the brand that I work for and I um, oversee training for the brand, is uh, part of the focus service division. And um, we have uh, 446 hotels as of um, last week, and we're opening many hotels in the United States, North America, and internationally. We started our international expansion uh, about two years ago. What will we cover today? Uh, first, how did this all start? How come one day I uh, came to uh, GDC and I uh, wanted to do a, a serious game for training? Uh, also, what were the first steps uh, how, uh, after we had the initial idea? What were the first steps and uh, how did we get started and everything? Uh, why did we create a demo for this game? One of the first things we created for the game was a demo before we actually started working on the full game itself. And the demo was created for a PC 
and the game itself was created for the PSP. What was the logic behind it? Uh, why the PSP? Why we chose that? And Ben kind of um, touched that uh, point, but I'll uh, go into it a little more deep. And then uh, creating the full game itself, all the steps that we went through, it's more from my personal view as a corporate client and what I learned and what uh, you as game developers or corporate clients can learn to make your life easier when you uh, go to this project. Uh, our launch strategy, uh, we started launching this game and we're still launching it. We launched it at the beginning of this year, but uh, there are a few more steps to this game before we can call it fully launched. Our return on investment and uh, feedback from uh, some users that we had so far. The game was launched in February, so I do not have an extensive feedback, but um, I can uh, share some feedback with you and uh, a little survey that I, the interesting survey that I did uh, last week. Then uh, we'll do a quick game demo. We connected a PSP here to the, to the screens and uh, we'll do a quick game demo and I'll answer some questions. What I will not cover is how much it costs us. I'm sorry, I cannot, uh, I cannot disclose this information uh, and um, I just cannot, so don't ask about it. I will not, not, not answer. So first thing, how did it start, you know? Sorry, wasn't enough. Yeah, still to come, right? Um, more to come. So how did it start? This is my boss, Adrian Curry, a uh, great guy, head of Hilton Garnin brand. And uh, you see on the, on the left, uh, that's his real picture and that's his avatar on the right. Uh, Adrian called me one day, he's like, David, I want a game. That was basically it, that was a phone call. David, I want a game, this sounds cool, this looks really cool, I have an idea, can you make it happen? He's my boss, I said, of course Adrian, consider it done. And I hung up the phone. And I'm like, oh boy, what am I supposed to do now? So uh, I started by doing some research. Those are the first steps. The first step was to do some research, and as Ben said, uh, I came here to Game Developers, Developers Conference, basically with a big sign saying, help, I need some help. I don't know what to do. I gave my boss a promise that this is going to be done. This is going to be ready. And I don't know what to do. Uh, got some ideas, made some contacts, different companies. Uh, I remember sitting at one of the b uh, business uh, lunches and saying, I work for Hilton Hotels Corporation. We want to do a game. Anybody knows how to do it. I had a swarm of people coming to me and saying, I can do it for you. I can do it for you. Um, before we were able to go to uh, any proposals or anything like that, we realized that the most important thing for us was to define the game objective. What, are, what do we want to do with this game? Yes, it's cool. It's really interesting, and uh, we're going to get a lot of great PR from it, but uh, what are the objectives of the game? And uh, after putting our heads to it, and with Ben's help as well, uh, we came up with two objectives for the game. The, a direct objective and an indirect objective. Our direct objective was to teach team members right and wrong behaviors. Again, I'll tell team members, housekeepers, food and beverage servers, front desk agents, and so on, what to do and what not to do on your day-to-day -day job. Pretty easy. The indirect link was to create a link between their day-to-day -day job and what they do every day on their job and the satisfactions of our guests. Now, how does the system work nowadays? You all stay staying at, at a hotel probably today. Um, some of you might get a survey when you go back home. When you're done with your stay, you're going to get an email from Hilton, Marriott, whoever it is, uh, asking you, how was your stay? Could you please rate it? What was the cleanliness of the room? How was the service that you have received? And so on. Um, about 25% of you will actually fill in that survey and send it back. And those results are going to go back to the hotel. So from being a team member that forgot to pick up the tray in the hallway until you got back home and actually put it on the survey and send it back to the hotel, it's going to take about a month till that, uh, that result is going to come back to the hotel. There's no way there's going to be a link between what I did as a team member and what uh, happened at uh, uh, and the survey that you got. I, I'm not going to make that link. In a game, we have the opportunity to create that link because when you do something wrong or something right, your scores are going to go up or down. And that was the most powerful part of this game. Uh, we went to, into a request for information and then a request for proposal so uh, we can... Uh, get our uh, everything aligned together before we start working on this. Uh, we had about 20 companies participating throughout this whole process, and we ended up choosing Virtual Heroes uh, from Raleigh, North Carolina. We have three uh, representatives from Virtual Heroes in the room today. Um, if you guys want to just wave, Steve, Joe, Randy. Uh, and uh, we ended up signing a contract with them. Now, the contract was another important thing. Uh, we didn't just sign a contract, let's create a game, and that's it. We had a contract in three stages. The first stage of the game was to create a demo, and I'll talk about that in a second. The second stage was to create a game for Elton Garden Inn, our 446 hotels, 
And the third stage would be to expand to the rest of the Hilton family, about 3,200 hotels right now, um, if we choose to do so upon successes of the first two stages. So why did we create a demo? Uh, why was it so important for us? First, first thing, uh, we wanted to be first to market with this. And I'm being honest here, we wanted to be the first hospitality company that created a serious game for training. So uh, by doing a demo that is uh, a little shorter, it takes a short amount of time to create, we were able to put that demo out, put some PR out, and then rest assured that we are the first ones to do it, and now we can create the game uh, the right way. We don't need to rush through it, we don't need to uh, run through a lot of steps, we can just take our time. Um, and uh, the other thing was uh, we wanted to use that uh, demo as a beta testing. We wanted to um, uh, take it to different uh, hotels, and this is one of the hotels that I went to, uh, Hilton Garden in El Secundo, Los Angeles, um, and uh, just uh, do a demo with them, get feedback from uh, team members. This is the, uh, one of the cooks, this is the assistant general manager, and this is one of the front desk agents. They went through the game, they gave us feedback, what they thought about it, how can we work with the game, what can we do better, and what they are expecting when we're getting this uh, final project done. Then we have to find uh, something to play this game on. And Ben talked about this. We did uh, some uh, testing. Uh, we had Virtual Hero send us uh, a game that would be similar to the game that we are going to end up having um, so we can match it to a platform. Uh, the first thing that we wanted to do was actually to try and do it on our own machines. Uh, we have computers at every hotel that the, our uh, team members are using to check you in when you, when you check in as guests and so on. So uh, we did a test and we uh, rated really poorly on the test. We couldn't even uh, turn on the game. Um, our computers are business computers. They are there for Excel, for Word, and for other business applications. There are no video cards, or if there is something, then it's really, really low end. Um, we looked at the, another device, the GP2X. I'm not mistaken. Uh, also wasn't compatible with uh, what we needed to do. And the PSP was the one that, um, that uh, would really work. And um, I, at that point, contacted Sony, and they were very cooperative. Uh, we were able to create a great partnership with them and uh, find uh, a way to make this all uh, training work on the PSP. Virtual Heroes also had to find an engine to work with it, uh, end up using a vicious cycle, and, um, and everything really came together at the end. A lot of flexibility from everybody, understanding that us, the Hilton Hotels Corporation, Hilton Garden brand, uh, we're not gamers. We, don't know, we do not know what we're doing uh, when it comes to games, and uh, we don't know uh, how to work them, and uh, you guys need to explain to us what needs to be done. So everything ended up working fine. Uh, creating the full game. The full game was created for four positions, housekeeping, engineering, food and beverage, and front desk. The demo was only for front desk, and then we had four more, uh, uh, three more uh, games added to the game. So it's basically four games in one. Why did we put them all together? Why are they not separate games? Uh, it, it's a part of the logic of we want our team members to cross-train. We want them to understand what other team members are doing. So uh, by, uh, let's say I'm a, I'm a front desk agent and I want to move on in the company. I want to become a food and beverage manager. Well, maybe the first step would be to play the game and see uh, what, do they, what do the guys in food and beverage are uh, doing. Uh, there are some uh, cross functions between the games. Uh, for example, again, if I'm a front desk agent, uh, I need to check that the pantry, our pavilion pantry is uh, uh, if, it, if it needs to be restocked or not. And then I call food and beverage. If I'm playing the food and beverage game, then I need to go, when I get a call, I need to go and restock the pavilion pantry and so on. Um, what did I learn? I learned that uh, corporate America and uh, game developers speak different languages. Uh, I remember getting on uh, phone calls, um, uh, conference calls with virtual heroes, and you guys are great. I'm not, you haven't done anything wrong. But uh, with Ben and virtual heroes and myself at the beginning, and we're going through a 60-minute uh, conference call, and at the end, the first thing that I did was hang up the phone, call Ben, and say, can you explain in English what they did? Just say, I'm not understanding one word. Um, if you are working with, with, uh, with a traditional company and you are a game developer, make sure that you explain the process to them. It will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, by, for example, um, Virtual Hero is explaining to me uh, how the levels are working in the game and what can be done in a level and what are the limitations. I was able to make their life so much easier by not saying, oh, can we just add like 30 more seconds of audio? No, it's not possible because this level is already full. And 
other things like that. Uh, explain to your client exactly uh, what is your language, what are your capabilities, and what are your restrictions. And if you are a corporate person and you're working with a game developer, don't start throwing uh, different acronyms or different ways that your business works, uh, works because it won't make sense to them uh, as well. So it's really a cross-education between both sides. Launch strategy. Uh, well, we launched this game in, uh, uh, at our conference in Austin. We had a conference. We presented this uh, in front of uh, 600 general managers and 600 directors of sales. Uh, got them all excited about the game. Take the message back home. Take it to your properties. Show it to your team members. And then a couple of weeks later, we actually send them the units, a PSP to every hotel. And um, a PSP to every hotel. And uh, also, um, also instructions on how to use the game, best practices, uh, this game is not a mandatory game. You don't have to do it for training. It's it's uh, it's optional if you want to do it. Uh, we recommend that team members that actually want to play games and are interested in it can play it. Another advantage we have with the PSP is that you can connect it to any TV that we have in our guest rooms uh, with uh, their uh, component cable. So um, any guest room that is not uh, is not occupied can become a training room. One person can play. Two or three people can watch them play at the same time. Uh, so we send a cable to every uh, every um, every hotel as well, and uh, now they're rolling with it. They're starting to uh, get going and um, and see how it works. Uh, languages. We have hotels. We operate right now our brand since we started uh, expanding internationally in six different in six different languages. Um, but we only uh, made the game in English so far, and the reason for that was we are going to translate it to other languages, and that's what I meant when I said that we are still in the process of launching this, uh, but we launched it in English first. We want to get comments from all of our uh, team members, general managers, how the game works. If there's anything that we need to fix, we'll fix it in English and then start a translation so we don't need to go back and start translating everything all over again. Uh, ROI and feedback. Um, well, first, I, I told you about the, the surveys that, you're, um, that you are uh, filling if you are a guest and you get a survey from... Uh, our surveys are called SALT, Satisfaction and Loyalty Tracking. And if you see uh, at the top of the PSP, either, either there or there, every interaction we have that, will have that um, Satisfaction and Loyalty Tracking meter. So when you do something wrong, your uh, Satisfaction and Loyalty Tracking score, SALT, is going to go down. If you do something right, it's going to go up. There is one for every individual, present, individual interaction as well. So you get that uh, specific uh, information every time. Um, what uh, we've done for ROI... We don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but we want to have an opportunity to measure return on investment. So um, every uh, team member that comes and plays this game is going to have a unique identifier. Each one of our hotels has a unique code, and then you put your first name, your last name, you have your unique identifier, and once you're done playing the game, your soul scores for that specific game are going to be saved on the memory stick. Later on, when we get to that point, we're going to extract all of those... Um, all of all that information, and we're going to compare it to real-life satisfaction and loyalty tracking scores, real-life salt scores, and we'll be able to see if there was a, a, a correlation between the trends. And then uh, emails. I got a lot of emails from team members. Uh, even before we launched this, wanted to be a part of it, wanted to, to play. They just went. They found my name. They emailed me and said, I want to be part of the beta testing. I love this. I want to be in charge of this. I have new ideas, and so on. And then uh, survey. Uh, I gave this unit one of, the, uh, one of these units uh, each one of the, uh, for each one of our corporate team members. And uh, a lot of them has, have kids from ages 8 to 17. Uh, and uh, when I called them and asked them, hey, how do, you, do you like the game? They said, well, you know what? I haven't really had a chance, chance to play it. My kids are playing it all the time. They're actually fighting on it about it. Um, the unit is open to any other games. You can play God of War. You can play SOCOM. You can play whatever game you want to buy. But the kids are actually playing our game. They're more interested. Now, I know that there's a bias there. Their mom or dad are working in the industry, and it's a way to relate with your mom and your dad. But um, they're really liking So I sent them a survey. I asked them, uh, have your kids take the survey, and asked them, uh, how do you like the game? Uh, what did you learn? How many times do you need to knock on the door before you go in? Uh, do you need to pick up a tray the uh, hallway and so on? And they all got all the questions right, even the 8-year-olds. They, uh, they got all of the questions uh, correctly. Uh, I asked them uh, what uh, position was their favorite. And I got different answers for that. And uh, all of them said that they would like to work. They hope to in the future. Uh, we'll do a quick demo. Starting with the excuses now. 
Sort ends. There we go. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, I can see it just good at. So when you start the game, there's a quick intro. Um, again, Adrian, there's a reason we put an avatar for him. Uh, he's on the intro. So back. Yeah, if you sell the garden in before, please raise your hand. If you haven't, please do so on your next trip. Uh, just something about the Elton Garden Inn. Uh, it's not a coincidence that Elton Garden Inn was the brand that actually took this project um, on itself. We are considered to be within our brands a technology brand from our um, beds to our working area to our free wireless internet. It's really designed uh, with high tech in mind. So. This is why we wanted to take training to the next level as well. This is Adrian. Hello, and welcome to Hilton Garden Inn's Ultimate Team Play. By playing this game, you will learn how to improve our guest loyalty. Now go have fun. So there's a tutorial in the game, very important for us, is, uh, because a lot of our team members just don't know how to play uh, games. They need a tutorial and explain to them exactly how the buttons are, playing, are, are working. Uh, just to, um, uh, yeah, I was keeping. So Ben's going to uh, play the housekeeping uh, position. He's going to go to the left and take the task list on the, on the corner. On the top, go forward. Left. Oh, no, on the... Yeah. And I'll look down. See the task list there? Yeah. Should I do it? Uh, the one thing about a PSP, if you've never played one before, even if it's a new game, it takes about five minutes to get used to the to the unit and how to work it. And it can be really frustrating when uh, you have um, uh, some of our team members that are not gamers, never played game before, and are getting frustrated within those five minutes. So that's one of the instructions that we gave them, where... Let's just go in. Uh, well, one of the instructions that we gave them was just um, uh, play with it a little bit, get, uh, get acquainted with it, uh, have someone that uh, knows how to use a PSP, someone that is a gamer, to be in charge of this project uh, and uh, really create a log and make sure that the unit actually doesn't walk out of the... Um, out of the in this mode, by the way, just for my own sin, fraud, hits. Anything, so... Oh. So, uh, right now, you can look at your task list and see what rooms you need to clean. Just go back. Um, and we're gonna go to one of the rooms, and it's because we don't have uh, a lot of time, I'm just gonna explain. When you go into a room, uh, you're not gonna start cleaning the whole room. You're gonna go into the room and you're gonna click one button, it's gonna clean the room. But now you gotta start exploring. You gotta walk around the room and find out what was uh, missed when you um, uh, when the, the room was uh, clean. There's a tray on the floor there. Well, you can start vacuuming as well if you want. But uh, there's a tray on the floor. Here, vacuum over there. Uh, uh, one of our pet peeves at the hotels is that uh, as a guest, I would walk and there's always going to be a tray from last night's uh, room service. I, I, as a corporate team member, will always pick it up and take it to the GM's office and tell him, hey, look what I found at your, uh, at your, um, all in your hallway. But you as guests, of course, of course, will not do that. So uh, every time you walk by a tray and you don't pick it up, your satisfaction and loyalty tracking scores are going to go down. Eventually, you will learn. Uh, you got to knock three times before you go in. If you um, knock less than three times, then you're not going to gain as many scores. Uh, you could have gained five. Here you go, five. Uh, now you're going to enter. You're going to clean the room. One click of a button. And then you start, start walking around. Yeah. Now, now you're going to start walking around, opening drawers, and, um, and fixing things, remove. Uh, you're going to do the same thing in the bathroom. If you see a guest while you're walking around, you're going to have to interact with that guest. If you do not interact, you're going to lose uh, so, uh, scores. Uh, it could be as easy as just saying hello and smiling. 
and sometimes we'll just get to more than that. Uh, there is a, a deeper level to the to the the training uh, in some interactions we're actually going to be able to notice that if you start talking to a guest in the hallway you might be able to find a problem and you might be able to solve it right there and then and um, and make sure and the sold scores of the hotels are going to stay high so uh, I want to give you a few more uh, minutes for questions um, the engineering uh, position is pretty similar oh that's very important, actually. Before you leave the room, the AAR, yeah. And, you know, um, I remember uh, talking about AAR in one of our content calls, and then that was one of my questions. What is AAR? I'm not... Uh, so, um, uh, when you get out of the room, uh, it's asking you, are you done cleaning this room? Are you sure? And when you say yes, it's telling you these are the things that you forgot and the next guest is going to check into this room that you, nice, you now said that is clean, is going to find those things and rate us lower on our scores. So um, I'm going to stop the demo. Are you hooked? Then can I stop? Um, I'm going to go back. Basically, uh, I'm going to give you a couple of uh, minutes. If you have any questions, uh, anything except how much did it cost us, um, then I'll be happy to take it. Do the people get any kind of training before? Do they get like an instructor-led class before they play the game? How do they know that they're supposed what things are wrong? Excellent question. Um, we have uh, a full training concept going on before that. Of course, orientation that they go through, uh, then uh, ultimate skills, which is our job skills training that they learn how to clean the bed, how to how to make the bed, how to clean the bathroom, and all that. Then a training called ultimate service, which is a video-based training where they have interactions with a video, but they learn how to give the right service. And this is basically a run through before they finish it. And it's again, optional, not mandatory. What was the most difficult part in translating the, the skills needed for the people, for example, cleaning the rooms and everything into a gameplay? Was it actually difficult coming up with a mechanic to do that? Um, it, it took some creativity to come up with a concept of what exactly is going to be the gameplay and what we're going to do with it. I think the most difficult part was the conversations. I never, again, on my end, I've never done a game before. So just seeing that, because a huge Excel spreadsheet that I had to approve within a week. Uh, it took me to, uh, no, not with it. But uh, that, was, uh, that was one of the most difficult things. A lot of moving parts to it. What's the life cycle of the game and like how many years are you planning on having this version and is there an update mechanism that you have already established for the distribution of it? Well, uh, first, uh, we, we can have updates on, on two different levels, but the first step would be to uh, uh, launch it internationally in different languages and see how it works. And we're going to learn a lot from it before we can actually make commitments to next step. Uh, but, um, uh, okay. Uh, but uh, after that, also, uh, there's an expansion to the rest of our brands, which will, uh, would, uh, you know, take different images and all of that. And uh, what, uh, something great to do would be to have team members playing against each other, but we're not there yet. And I'll take well, one more question. Why didn't you create a hosted game that could be played over the Internet? Why was it device-based? Um, part of it is because when we create a game or when we create a training tool, we got to provide all the tools to use it. Uh, if we wanted to do it on our system, it would take a lot of bandwidth, uh, and that would be on an expense of our guests. Uh, and uh, also, the PSP is cool. I mean, this, you know, just hook them up to it. That message brought to you by so Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the other um, issue was that, uh, again, the hosted environment still would potentially require re, re new other hardware. And the PSP has Wi-Fi as well. And so we could move in a direction of doing something quasi um, multiplayer with that. So the the platform had the ability to kind of scale if we if it can go in that direction. I think the, I just, I'll just ask a quick question. Um, we've created some games for new hire orientation at Sun, and they were optional. So when you say you're, the gameplay is optional, we've actually had a difficult time getting an adoption rate or getting people to play them. Have you encountered that? And what are the other options to receive the training if they don't want to do the game? Well, uh, it's not because of budget that we send one unit per hotel. It's also to create a demand. So that was one one thing. I think that the fact that we are using the PSP is creating a lot of excitement around it. But also our um, 
I, I don't know, our team members are just excited. I can't explain it. Uh, they, they love it. They, they think it's great. And for them, it's not training. They're playing a game. Do you have data, though, that tells you how many people are playing that versus getting the information other ways? Or? Uh, not yet, but we will because we are. We do have that RNI, RNI mechanism, and we can we will send the service just too early right now at this point. There, there is tracking systems built into the game that, that can write data files for it. So. All right. Thank you. Um, so we're going to take another 10-minute